Good morning, everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank all the organizers for giving me this opportunity. So, as we all know, the visual fields are one of the most important investigations uh, to localize or else to diagnose certain uh, neurological disorders as well as ophthalmological disorders. Uh, the one more thing, like important thing, is like it's a neurology. Visual fields are nothing but a black and white things. It becomes very boring if I go on like speaking like into the depth and all. So hence, I have made it very simple. I have tried to make it very simple. If I say it would be a correct thing. So we'll go ahead with the presentation. So I'll be dealing with basically the first part will be the basics, a very few superficial basics. Second thing is systematic approach. Third thing is few case examples. So visual field, the definition of visual field is to detect the presence of other objects around that object of in focus. So it means like it has got a certain extent, like in temporal, it's about 100 degree, in nasal, it's about 60 degree, superiorly, again, it's about 60 degree, and inferiorly, about 70 degree. So clinically, we are like, uh, we have to test the visual fields. Bedside, there are certain clinical methods like finger confrontation and all. This is the first step to uh, like assess the visual field of a patient whenever we want. Second thing is perimetry. There are multiple like static, kinetic, and then super threshold and all. Third thing is Amsler grid is another non-invasive and then very easily done uh, clinical test for the visual field assessment. Fourth one is uh, electroretinogram. So the part like the visual field has two parts like one is central as well as a peripheral field. Central field are test from zero degree out to 30 degrees. Peripheral fields are tested from the 30 degrees to 60 degrees. Medically speaking, 0 to 5 degree is the central uh, field. It means it includes fovea and the macula. 6 to 80 degree is paracentral. So 9 to 30 degrees, again, it's a near peripheral. It includes optic disc around about 15 degree away from the center. The 30, and 30 to 60 degrees is mid peripheral. Again, the 60 and beyond 60 is far peripheral. So this is just to have an idea. So this is the basically hill of vision and the sensitivity. The sensitivity decreases from the central fovea to the periphery because of rods and cone distributivity. The threshold varies accordingly. And the blind spot or absolute coma is always present on the disc because of lack of photoreceptors over it. So sensitivity is like central five degrees. Sensitivity is like low to mid 30 decibels. Five to 30 degrees sensitivity is like it between mid, mid to upper 20 decibels. Beyond 30 degrees, Sensitivity is teens to low 20 decibels. So threshold sensitivity. Every point, threshold means every point within a patient visual field has its own threshold of sensitivity. Sub-threshold intensity not seen. Supra-threshold intensity is seen. Frequency of seeing. At the boundary between the seeing and unseeing. Stadback. Stadback means like we commonly use Humphreys field analyzer. Humphreys field analyzer statistical package. Again, it's this model determine how their results for each tested point compares and falls outside the normal population. It means basically it compares the normative data with the Present patient, the, the subject, the subject, uh, the which like we are going to test, it depends like uh, it compares his age compared to the normal data. So basically like now this is the basic part of the visual field. It has got certain parts, something called like there are nine important parts. This, this is called anatomy of the visual field printout. It's a single field analysis printout. The first part is this one. So this, it means it has got a test selection and general information parameters. The second part is this one. This has got a reliability indices, something called like fixation losses, false positive errors, false negative errors. This is third part, something numerical results. This is fourth part. This is grayscale. This is fifth part. This is total deviation. Sixth part is pattern deviation. Seventh part is glaucoma hemifield test. Eighth part is global indices. Ninth part is probability symbols and the gaze graph. So with this, this is the, again, I'm going, this is the numerical results, grayscale, total deviation. This is the numerical graph. This is the uh, pictorial graph. And so this, this is the total deviation numerical graph. And this is the pictorial, this is pattern deviation. Again, it's a 
numerical graph followed by the pattern deviation uh, plot. This is the uh, pictorial uh, explanation. So we'll go one by one. The fixation loss. The Humphreys field analyzer periodically checks the patient fixation by presenting stimuli to their blind spot. When the number of fixation loss is greater than 20%, a symbol double X will appear next to the fixation loss. We are going to like, see in the next uh, visual field examples. The false negative errors means the brighter stimulus is presented to a test point in the field that was earlier reported as having a normal sensitivity, but now the patient does not respond to the bright stimulus. High false negative scores might indicate a fatigue or an inattentive patient. The false negative errors are significant if it is more than 33%. False positive errors is nothing but a trigger happy patients. Again, it's significant whenever there is a more than 33%. So it means the, the, like, the false positive errors are calculated by the machine. Like when the, the projector makes a noise, when it moves and the patient responds to the sound through though the stimulus is being presented, the patient is responding outside the factors. Patient is responding to the outside factors or trying to out guess when the stimuli is presented so this is an example this is like this if, if anybody like if anybody asks you to describe the field means like first thing you have to see the uh, patient details and all. it's like i have cropped the image the next thing is reliability indices second part the reliability index is the fixation loss is 8 out of 18 and it has got a double x sign so it means like i'm not going to see the further details what it has got like i'm going to like it's like nothing but it's like the grayscale has got a something called uh, clover leaf pattern it means patient fatigability caused this kind of visual field effect and again like one more point i want to stress this thing is like we subjected this visual field test in a, a glaucoma suspected patient where the cup disc ratio is 0.5 so i am expecting a normal visual field but here we are getting uh, some scotomas like some peripheral scotomas which are not at all clinically correlating hence that is the most important thing like we have to uh, see the reliability factors. Second thing is grayscale. It is not for the clinicians. It is only for the patient benefit. It is to explain the patient how much their visual field has compromised. And just for the interpretation or understanding for the patient benefit. It represents the tested points, non-tested non intermediate points which have been assigned values interpolated from the surrounding points. Tells the doctor nothing about the depth of the scotoma. Hence, we are not supposed to see this just only to explain the patient or else just for the uh, presentation purpose so that it will mainly catch the attention of the uh, viewers. So another, the third part, the fourth part is like total deviation. Like I'm not going into the details like how it is calculated. Otherwise, it will be very boring. These numerical values represent the difference in the decibels between the patient test results and the expected age corrected normal values at each test point in the visual field by this uh, the normative data. That is, uh, if the threshold value at any point is lower than the expected value for a given patient's age, this will be expressed in total deviation as a negative number, say minus one, showing it is one decibel below the expected value. These negative values become diagnostic when they reach minus five or greater or more. So if there are several grouped together. So these are all numerical these things. Again, these will be in a pictorial matter like the, this is something called total deviation pattern. So this like again, the plot just below this finding is a gray stone symbols, which shows the statistical significance for a given test. These are based on the deviation from the expected normal patient threshold profile. The darker the pattern, the more significant the deviation from the expected threshold. So pattern deviation again, the plot similar to total deviation except StatPak attempts to adjust the analysis of the test results for any overall changes in the height of a measured hill of state vision caused by cloudy media, cataracts, small people. Basically, it means like whenever there is a uh, like avoidable uh, media opacities like so that if you avoid all those uh, parameters so that we can get a better visual field. So it means like whenever there is a cataract, we, patient is not able to see properly, but his disc and his retina, everything is normal. Hence, this pattern deviation is the most important. So example two, where is the likely pathology in these conditions? Like in this condition, everything is fine. Like the grayscale, it looks quite okay, but the total deviation shows 
a totally depressed field but pattern deviation doesn't show much like it's almost nearly normal except these two uh, minor problems so when we see the pattern deviation it means it's normal when you compare the gray scale it's it's normal it means it's just because patient had a cataract and then which has produced these kind of scotomas in total deviation hence i always recommend to see the pattern deviation plot not the gray scale not the total deviation plot so caution abnormal visual field results in like the test which was poorly given the test was poorly given by the patient the instrument was defective the patient did not understand how to take the test because it has got a learning curve the patient was tired because of uh, patient rush and all the defect was real but the accounted for some pathology or glaucoma like brain tumor multiple sclerosis vascular problem congenital defect an infection retinal disease etc or the defect could be a false defect that is really not at a, not a problem at all so again like uh, just like this is the basic uh, i have gone very superficially so which felt to which feel to use 24-2 30-2 10-2 76 screening points are there 60-4 uh, another visual field tests are there so like i'm not going into the detail but which one we commonly use i'm just telling that all those things like central 30 dash means 30 stands for central 30 degree of the visual field 2 stands for the test point straddles the midline so versus 30 dash 1 where the points are on the midline since we are going to miss the uh, scotomas if we uh, do a 30 dash 1 test hence we are going uh, ahead with the 30 dash 2 test 76 two points like 76 points total are tested in 30 dash 2 each point separated by a six degree of visual space and then the next central 24 dash 2 it covers central 24 degree except nasally where it extends up to 30 degree total 54 54 points were tested with a six degree between the points it takes less time because 76 points and then 54 points so it's going to take a less time compared to the central 30 degree the another one is like the central 30 central 10 dash 2 so it means it represents the central 10 degree 68 points are tested with the two degree interval so most often used for the conditions which affect the central part of the like macular degeneration advanced glaucoma yeah retina, um, retinitis pigmentosa so also useful are the screening purpose for the toxic medications like ethambutol uh, hydroxychloroquine etc so another one is 76 uh, like 76 screener central 76 screener it screens the central again it is going to screen the central 30 degree it uses the exact test points as the like 30 dash 2 but it's a little bit faster hence it can be used for the screening purpose otherwise it's it, it it's almost similar to a 30 dash 2 only so this is the 24 dash 2 uh, grayscale uh, visual field printout so it has got a like everywhere like from superior you have this thing this thing like everywhere it has got a 24 degree except the a nasal one where it's, it's it's going to depict the field of 30 degree so this is 30 dash 2 where it's going to like give 30 degree in all the four quadrants this is 76 screening point i'm sorry and because of uh, some bad quality i'm sorry for the bad quality of the picture so now like with this basic now we move to how to approach the case systematically so rules the interpretive visual fields are both eyes together keep both eyes printouts as the patient sees like this the right side on the right side left side on the left side whenever even even, even most of the like uh, like students residents like even we also sometimes got confused uh, whenever we do some presentations and all like we always interchange like it's simple if you have a right side printout right eye printout keep it on the right of right side of yours left means left side of yours that's simple thing so step one so whenever you see a field defect the first thing is like is the fields are reliable or not first thing you have to see so in this uh, picture so the fixation loss is 5 out of 19 so it's like double x cross sign is there hence the field is not reliable again you have to repeat the test so that you to give a much more uh, benefiting second step the is there any field defect is there any field defect in this picture like the right side shows yes there is a field effect in the central aspect there is a central scotoma in the left side in the in the in, in the right side in the left side there is a central scotoma in the left side in the right side it has got a some inferior altitudinal uh, defect it means like there is a field defect okay 
So the third step, the field effect is unilateral or bilateral. So that is the most important. If it is unilateral, then most of the time, the pathology is restricted to the retina, optic nerve, or anterior to the chiasma. In this, the lesion will be localized. Hence, we have to do, hence, we have to do a careful, thorough examination of the eye, optic disc, retina, and other things like. The fourth step, respect for the vertical or horizontal meridian. So in this picture, there is a scotoma, which is there like uh, in the inferotemporal aspect in both eyes. Again, it's, it has got a respect for the mid, midline, vertical meridian. So it means it has got a certain important thing. So, so respect for vertical meridian means there is a bilateral thing and then there is a, a chiasmal or else retrochiasmal lesion should be there. Like it has to come to our mind. So whether, the next thing is like whether the heteronymous hemianopia or else homonymous hemianopia. So in this, like the, the, the visual field of the the patient shows like there is a bitemporal hemianopia. Bitemporal hemianopia means is nothing but a heteronymous hemianopia. It means the both the temporal aspect of the patients are depressed. So it means that the both the temporal uh, aspects are depressed. It has got a vertical uh, midline respect again like uh, the we all know the the, the, the nasal fibers are decussed at the optic chiasma hence the lesion will be localized at the optic chiasma so this is heteronymous whenever there is a homonymous again they we have to think a little bit extra so then homonymous the only the like other uh, it's opposite to the heteronymous it means like one eye is temporal another one is nasal aspect is affected it means like we have to think like uh, whatever whenever we see a homonym seminopia then the the lesion should be like post chiasmatic from the chiasma to the optic radiation it includes op 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 optic tract gen geniculate body optic radiations and then the occipital cortex so so whenever we see homonym seminopia then the our idea is to localize the lesion in between this like it's a huge pathway like from the optic chiasma to the occipital cortex Again, how to proceed? So before going into that thing, we need to know certain terminologies. One is like there is a complete hemianopia. Complete hemianopia means like entire hemifield. Like there is no uh, white part in this part. Like it means like its entire field is affected. That is complete hemianopia. And the an another another one is incomplete or else sectoral hemianopia it means only the sectoral part of the hemianopic field is affected it means it is incomplete the another, uh, the other thing is like one more term is congress and incongress congress means the same defect in both eyes like this above is a congress one this is also a congress defect one whenever there is a different defect in each eye so this eye has got a, this part like superior temporal this was a inferior temporal it means like different defects are there it means it's an incongress so based on these terminologies again the further thing is like step 6 is important Homonymous hemianopia, complete and congress. Complete means the entire hemifield is gone. Congress means the mirror image. So hence it has got no further localizing value. So whenever there is a homonymous hemianopia, incomplete and congress, it means it has got a certain value. So congress defects means like the lesions are most of the time they will be in the occipital area or else the posterior parietal area. In congress, the lesions are like anterior to the parietal area and the optic tract and the lateral geniculate body. So in this field, like we are going to see here the congress defects and in this like the incongress this thing. So how to differentiate these two things like again associated feature we have to see clinically the associated features of the optic tract like whenever there is a lesion in the optic tract it shows like incongress field defects, contralateral RAPD, asymmetric optic atrophy. Optic radiations, whenever there is a lesion in the optic radiation, there could be a, some quadrantronium PS. Whenever there is a lesion in the occipital lobe, it, it means like it shows like the fields are congress. So sometimes there can be some macular sparing and all. So clinical cases, we'll go to clinical cases so that it won't be boring for you guys. So first case, a 53 year old female patient presented with sudden loss of vision 20 days. Visual acuity is 618. The, uh, Visual like it in the 618 in the eye, left eye, in the right eye, left eye was grossly within normal. The systemic history gives history of diabetes and there's a hypertension. 
So in this visual field, the, all the parameters are, everything is was within normal limit. There is a scotoma, which has got a, uh, like clinical examination shows us some idea, like what a defect you are expecting in the visual fields. It has got a, something called alt altitudinal. Altitudinal means it's like above or below the horizontal midline. So it means like there is an altitudinal defect in these conditions. So the defect should be in the superior or inferior portion of the visual field that respects the horizontal meridian. So this is the patient, like same thing, the, the, the fundus examination shows the, uh, there is a disc edema. We are not able to uh, identify like whether it's a sectoral or like it looks completely disc edema. Whenever we do angiogram, then we'll come to know there is a disc perfusion in the, all the aspect of the disc except in the inferior inferior nasal area. So because of inferior nasal area, there is a superior part defect is there. So this is like in this magnified picture, we can see there is a poor perfusion in the inferior nasal aspect of the right eye. Because of that thing, the fields are corresponding also. Hence our diagnosis is it's a non-arteritic ischemic anterior, anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So second thing, again, there is an inferior uh, Hemi, uh, inferior field defect, the inferior altitudinal field defect. Again, this the clinical picture shows uh, there is a opacification of the retina in the superior half. Superior half field, uh, superior half the retina is affected. It means it's going to give a inferior aspect visual field defect. It means it's a corresponding to the clinical this thing, the opacification and the clinical features of it's something called branch retinal arterial occlusion. So altitudinal defect can also be seen in other conditions, like in, in it can also be seen in other conditions. In altitudinal field defect, the optic nerve could be normal. There, there can be a sectoral edema, there can be a diffuse edema, or there can be a optic atrophy. Depends on the at, at, at which stage patient presented to us. So other common causes for the altitudinal, the, what we clinically see as ophthalmologist one is the advanced glaucoma. The other one is disc drusen. Case to a 35 year old male, high myopia, came for HCQ clearance, neurological examination as in investigations are all are normal. So again, we because for HCQ we done a, like we have done a 10-2 visual fields. Again, in like we repeated 30-2 uh, again, in that also it shows like bitemporal hemianopia is there. The clinical examination, neurological examination, everything was normal. To diagnose this case, we took almost one year. Whenever we see the fundus, we have a like myopia, myopic fundus, the tilted disc is there, like which is evident on the ultrasound. We, we have done an ERG, we repeated MRI twice, and finally we came to know that the diagnosis is not the neurological, it's just ophthalmological one. Something called tilted disc syndrome can also give rise to bitemporal hemianopia. So case three, a 35 year old female uh, complains like uh, gradual progressive vision loss from last one year referred by an infertility clinic to start uh, to get a clearance for gonadotropin releasing hormone and other things. Clinical exam shows acromegaly. So this patient typically what neurologist expects or else whenever we see a bitemporal hemianopia, sees like the patient field shows, uh, the patient fundus examination shows a mild paleness. Like it's not like complete paleness. So there is a mild paler is there. So hence, uh, we subjected for the neuroimaging and then we came, we got a pituitary adenoma in this case. So case three, a 36 year old male patient presented with a decreased vision one month. He has diagnosed as a pulmonary TB and he was taking ATT uh, from last eight months. This is the visual fields, like the, like the, before going to the visual field, this is the fundus examination, which shows a mild disc edema. Dr. Right. Vassar, uh, because of want of time, can I just request you to just find up in another one or two minutes? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. So, there is a bilateral disc edema, hence we investigated. Uh, the MRI brain shows chiasmal uptake of the, uh, chiasmal uptake. Hence, it like, in the fields, we are getting a temporal, bitemporal. Like, again, this is the left eye, this is the right eye, the temporal defects are there. So, I'll skip this one. It's a very central scotoma one due to uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. So other causes of bitemporal hemianopia are like uh, multiple evanescent white dot syndrome, azure cysts and tumors, etc. So last case, I think like this is the, this is not a case of glaucoma. What is the diagnosis? There is a peripheral 
field defect is there central part is saved so the thing is like it can be seen in a retinitis pigmentosa or else in case of a advanced glaucoma so i think this is the last case case number six like 62 year old female who has got uh, like she's on timolol from last four years visual intraocular pressures are normal fields are and advanced defects repeatedly this is the uh, serial uh, visual field printout shows like advanced field defect this is the examination of the fundus photo so everything is all within normal I mean, like even one year back also we have got the uh, like we have got the data and then again we saw the disc again it was normal so OCT RNFL each and everything was normal so again like after seeing all these things careful instructions given to the patient again the fields are dramatically better it means it has got a learning curve and like at the end i'd like to thank the organizers finally the take home message is it's a subjective test one should have a patience uh, to uh, make the patient understand it and the other thing is like uh, uh, that's it thank you sir